The launch of workload units in Bubble has left many developers puzzled. If you're wondering what's changed and why it matters, you are in the right place. Hi, I'm Ritesh Shetty, founder and CEO of Red7 Automations. After the introduction of workload units, we encountered a client gaffling with millions in consumption, facing a cost that could triple their expenses. Diving deep, we uncovered the root causes of this search and meticulously optimized their usage. Today, we are sharing the insights from this journey, highlighting the prime reasons for high workload unit consumption and strategies we employed to significantly reduce it. Stay tuned to learn how you can apply these optimizations to your own bubble projects. Before we dive into optimizing our workload units, let's first lay the groundwork what exactly are workload units? To fully grasp the impact of this shift, we need to understand how Bubble operated before and how its approach has evolved. Join us as we unpack the transition from speed-based limitations to data-focused caps and what this means for your Bubble development process. Let's dive into an analogy to help demystify Bubble's workload units. Think of it like transitioning from an internet service that offered unlimited data with speed limits to one that provides high-speed internet with a data cap. Remember, this is just an analogy to simplify the concept and make it more relatable. Imagine if your internet plan switched from unlimited speed to data caps overnight. That's exactly how Bubble's shift to workload units feels for developers. Previously, Bubble operated much like an internet service with unlimited data but varying speeds. The more you paid, the faster your app could run. Every plan had its speed limit, dictating how quickly your app could process data and user interactions. This model ensured simplicity but lacked flexibility for growing or fluctuating demands. The introduction of workload units by Bubble marks a significant pivot akin to moving from an unlimited speed internet plan to one with data caps, albeit with uniformly high speed across all plans. Now, instead of being constrained by the speed of operations, developers are allocated a certain amount of data processing unit per month. This change mirrors the evolution in internet service models where users now get high speed access up to a data cap ensuring high efficiency and performance up to a point. For Bubble developers, this means every app gets the same processing speed, but the volume of data it can handle without incurring additional costs varies by plan. This shift emphasizes efficient design and optimization, pushing developers to streamline their apps to consume fewer workload units, ensuring high performance without unnecessary expenditure. Workload units in Bubble quantify the server-side computational resources your app uses, measuring the processing needed for tasks to ensure fair resource allocation and optimize app efficiency. With this foundation, let's delve into the key drivers of workload unit consumption and uncover strategies for optimization. The first contributor, complex database queries. Complex database queries are major contributors to workload unit consumption. Complex queries, especially those that span across large data sets or involve multiple conditions, can significantly increase resource usage due to the processing power required to fetch the desired data. While Bubble doesn't allow fetching only specific fields directly in a query, structuring your data efficiently can mitigate this. For instance, separate structured data for quick searches and filters from unstructured data, detailed information only needed upon specific requests. This approach minimizes the data process during initial queries, reducing workload units. Additionally, simplify queries where possible and consider splitting complex data retrieval into stages to improve efficiency. Second contributor, excessive workflows. Frequent and complex workflows can significantly increase workload units. Each workflow action, especially those that are server-side, consumes computational resources. 
complex or inefficiently designed workflows that trigger often can quickly accumulate workload units. Optimize by consolidating workflows where possible, removing unnecessary actions and ensuring that workflows are triggered only under necessary conditions. Leverage custom states and client-side workflows to reduce server-side processing. Efficient workflow design not only conserves workload units but also enhances app performance. Third contributor, inefficient use of API calls. API calls are substantial workload unit consumers, especially when poorly managed. Each external API call requires processing that counts towards your workload units. Inefficient management such as frequent polling or retrieving large amount of data can increase consumption. To optimize API interactions and minimize workload units, focus on structuring your API requests to fetch only the essential data needed for your app's functionality. This approach reduces the volume of data processed and limits the number of calls made, conserving computational resources. Additionally, consider implementing strategies like batching requests or using webhooks for data updates to further reduce the need for frequent API calls, making your app more efficient and reducing its workload unit footprint. Contributor 4 is dynamic data loading and page renders. Dynamic data loading and frequent page renders can heavily impact workload unit usage. Loading dynamic content, especially on complex pages with multiple data sources, requires significant processing. This is intensified with frequent page visits or refreshes, increasing workload unit consumption. Minimize the use of dynamic elements to those essential for user experience and optimize data retrieval by loading only what's necessary for the initial view. Utilizing pagination or infinite scroll can also help by loading data in chunks. Implementing lazy loading for images and other media further reduces unnecessary workload unit usage. Fifth contributor, scheduled and recurring events. Scheduled and recurring backend events are a hidden drain on workload units. Regularly occurring events, even if they seem minor, can add up in terms of workload unit consumption, especially if they involve data processing or workflow triggers. Review the necessity of each scheduled event and its frequency. Consolidate events where possible and disable those not critical to app functionality. For necessary tasks, ensure they are as efficient as possible using optimized queries and minimizing workflow actions. This careful management of scheduled tasks can lead to significant saving in workload units. Remember, these are just a few of the top contributors to workload unit consumption. The good news is Bubble provides detailed logs allowing you to see exactly which actions consume how much workload units. This invaluable insight enables targeted optimization efforts. Keep monitoring, keep optimizing and ensure your Bubble app runs as efficiently as possible. Continuous improvement is key to maintaining performance while managing costs effectively. Ready to elevate your Bubble app's efficiency? Delve into the logs, pinpoint areas with high workload unit usage and begin your optimization journey. If you have discovered other innovative ways to optimize your app, share your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe for more insights on leveraging Bubble's platform to its fullest potential. Thank you for joining us on this deep dive into workload units. Until next time, keep innovating and optimizing. See you in the next video where we'll explore more ways to enhance your Bubble apps. Happy developing!